<laughs> well, as we can see, Winchester might be a small town, but when the lights are out, it's quite the little rave city. Mm, I disagree. I don't think it's the best place to go if you're looking for a crazy night out. But there are a lot of things to do in Winchester, which brings me on to the next part of the show. We've actually got a live performance in today. Well, Frank Turner's originally from Winchester, is it him? No, it's not. It's Alex Labour, but it is a special day for Alex today because it's his birthday. So, Alex, take it away. Can you lie next to her? And give her your heart, your heart, as well as your body you can. You lie next to her and confess your love, your love, as well as your folly you can. You kneel before the king and say, I'm clean, I'm clean. Tell me now, where was my fault in loving you with my whole heart? Oh, tell me now, where was my fault in loving you with my whole heart? He really does, isn't he, Ed? Especially on your birthday. Thank you very much for coming in. But, Alex, what are your musical aspirations? Well, I'm at university at the moment, and I'm, it's a good place to meet people. I'm hoping to sort of start a band or a group. That's really interesting. I mean, what would you say your musical influences were while she was growing up? Well, whilst I was growing up, it was sort of the jam and, and, and Oasis and sort of indie bands like that and Blur and that, things like that. that. That's really nice. Thank Brilliant. you, Alex. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. OK, well, unfortunately, folks, we're coming to the end of today's show. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I certainly have. So have I. It's been really good. So we've learned the historical context of, yes, we have. of Winchester. We've learned what you can do at night time. But what is there to do during the daytime? Well, guys, this is actually quite exciting. We've got the steamy Richard coming to take us on a steamy day out. Wow. 
Okay, well, guys, if you haven't guessed already, my um, I've got, actually got a, a thing about trains, and I really do love them. So um, we're going to take it over to Alex. Not Alex. Right. Richard. To Richard. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I think it's the trains that just got me excited. <laughs> well, remember, if you have any further questions or you want to take us... You know, you want us to come to see you, don't forget to email us at eyeson at hq.com. And make sure you tune in next week, guys, as our eyes are going to be on Bournemouth. And remember, next week, our eyes could, could be, be on, on you. you. I'm here at Alsford, just outside of Winchester, at the Watercrest Line, a preserved heritage train route that's attempting to bring back the glory days of rail travel. One ticket, please. Thank you. Now I've got my ticket, let's see what the Watercrest Line has to offer. In 1865, the Alton, Alsford and Winchester Railway Company opened the Midhance Railway, a 10 mile long stretch of track between New Alsford and Alton. Initially intended to provide an alternative route from London to Southampton, the line also transported military traffic from nearby Aldershot to the naval port, as well as the locally produced Watercrest from which the track got its most popular name. By the use of horse and carts, watercress leaves were transported from Alsford's famous watercress beds to the main station. These were then prepared by chefs to be served on the plates of passengers. Workers and locals commonly referred to the trip as going over the Alps due to the long, steep stretches of track between Alton and Alsford. During the 20th century, road travel in Great Britain became increasingly popular especially in the years after the war. The Watercrest Line used to earn a lot of money out of haulage, but with the rise of lorries and motorways, their income was drastically reduced. In addition to this, in 67, British Railways electrified the other route from London to Southampton. And now you have a situation like today, where almost every person in Great Britain owns a car. And when you think about it that way, the Watercrest Line never really stood a chance. The Watercrest Line was finally forced to close in 1973. However, four years later, the track was reopened by volunteers as a heritage line and is today serviced by a selection of preserved steam trains, maintained and overhauled by the dedicated volunteers that helped to make it such a popular attraction. People